All right, let's just do a short clip on some misconceptions around the me and Ryan Bowen match. Um, first off, the perceived pecking order and Ryan jumping line. I don't like the idea of there being a line. I really don't. Um, because that takes my own freedom away. That takes my liberties to pull whoever I want, when I want, away. Now, if I agree to compete for a league and they want to dictate who they line me up with, so be it. But I love the idea that if somebody out there is hungry enough and, you know, they really want it and they want to meet the criteria that I'm going to lay out there, I love it. I'm going to take it. I mean, I've been in bar rooms or gyms or wherever and when people kind of get catch wind of what I do you know I'll see them some some big guys will come over and they'll be picking my brain they'll be asking all kinds of questions and I'll kind of cut them off somewhere after they like try to be like well it's technique right and oh well what do you weigh oh so me and you wouldn't be in the same weight class oh okay I say do you just want to feel it you just want to grab it and see what it's like but I don't sit there and say, you know, some of them jump right on that. I don't sit there and say like, oh, if you want to feel it, um, you know, this is the golden hand and I'm the golden goose and you got to get in line and put, pay your dues. And there's about 7,000 guys in front of you. So, you know, by the time you get to that level, if you do in 15 years, uh, hit me up, you know, that's stupid. The beauty of this sport is a regular guy or someone new in the sport can go into a building and, and intermingle with, you know, Devin Larratt, John Brzezink, myself, many of the other people that are great in the sport. And, you know, there's not, there shouldn't be an elitist mentality. And I like people who are willing to go to battle. I love the warrior spirit. One of my favorite fighters, probably my favorite uh, MMA fighter, was Chuck Liddell. Uh, because Chuck Liddell... He loved the bang, you know. Um, I appreciate the art and wrestling and submission and all that, but Chuck Liddell was a banger. I like that. But more so, I liked that even when he had, like, a title match coming up like, six months, a year down the road, that guy would still be taking fights in between those matches because he just liked to go to war. He liked to bang. He liked to squash out any people that were around him, you know, and, and I gave the guy the nod. He, he was in the arena. And I think the idea of a pecking order really restricts you to that list and making that work. And, you know, if somebody wanted to come to my training group and say, I just want to see where I'm at with you and do it, so be it. If somebody's hounding me from Australia and they tell me they can stomp me out and I say, here's how a match can happen, let's make it happen and they, they put that together, then so be it. You know, um, that's part of the, the freedom and beauty of the sport that at the highest level, we, we have uh, specified tables and dimensions and rules. But guys seeing this stuff on YouTube or TV, they can sit down on their kitchen table and give it a run. That's the beauty of this sport. And I think restricting it is not moving in the right direction. And uh, I, I won't be restricted. That's, you know... That's never going to happen. And uh, the real big picture around this for me is it's accomplishing something that I've been fighting for for years, uh, more than years, decades. And it's, it's taking a step in a direction that everyone around me told me was a, a pointless fight, a pointless battle. And it was a, a voice that won't be heard. And when I finally got a chance to be in the driver's seat, when I saw a guy who wanted this match so bad, for one reason or another, is he promoting himself? Is he promoting his channel? Is he promoting his clothes? Does he really think he can beat me and take me off my horse? It could be all of those things. It could be none of them. It could be a combination. I really don't care. What he did is agree to a match with me under the guidelines that I laid out there. And one of them being most important is the testing. And a match that's going to garnish the attention this one is, that's a pretty big step. You know, we're not two hillbillies that are saying we're doing it. We're going to try to lay out the protocols and even make it more legit than 
what WAF does and, and other organizations. You know, the money is not the big picture around this. The, the me boosting a YouTube channel is not the picture around this at all. I've never been uh, a fame whore. I've never been uh, a glory whore. I like, you know, I have my own journey that I'm on, but I do love the sport. I love to compete and I needed something to be excited about. And I put the money out there as a way for us to put skin in the game. And from that pool, I'm comfortable with the idea of if testing is expensive, that we, we, we pay out of that pool and it comes off of our ends. And it's more being the pioneer of something that could ideally start change. It could be the, the, the thing that starts a change. Um, that excites me more than any of this. And, you know, if he's willing to put all those pieces together and be a part of it, so be it. For me, this is nothing more. This is, this is not about a smear campaign or how horrible Ryan Bowen is. The guy's a salesman. And uh, at the end of the day, if you don't like his tactics or you think he's a pain in the ass or, you know, uh, those all might be valid. But at the end of the day, you bought his product. And at the end of the day, he got me. And it, it wasn't hard. I laid it out there and uh, he took it. But if you look at the big picture of what this could represent, um, that's what's important to me. You know, I have kids that I'm bringing into this sport. Uh, there's training groups we go to. I see young kids all the time. I see new guys. And if I can be the person to put myself out there and make it a better landscape for them and for my children growing up, um, yeah, that's, that's where it's at for me. And as soon as you start to look at it that way and, you know, not in, not in the way that's hateful and angstful and, you know, we're just all looking for a payday, uh, Ryan didn't deserve it, Ryan's big mouth, uh, you know, we all have our feelings and believe me, some of the stuff coming into this got under my skin, but we might look back at this and laugh as what started off as angst and I want to shut this guy up, which is part of it. You can see that there's, this match could be so much more than, you know, him trying to spike subscriptions or, you know, me with my butt hurt ego. You know, if you look at it for where it started and what it turned into, if it kicks off the way I see it kicking off, change could be on the horizon. And that's what I'm hoping for. And instead of waiting for people to, to make the change for me, instead of beating the drum, taking action ourselves so fingers crossed that it all goes off the way it is and uh that's it with clearing the air